Well, I remember my first impression of Arlington was that it was a very cute town um, because in El Salvador, all the houses look the same. And over here, I realized the architecture is the same, but every, like, your house is gonna be different from your neighbor's house. So it was, like, every house was unique, whether it was gonna be like two floors or one floor. And the fact that it was very green, I, I really liked that. And it seemed like it was a very safe place to take walks. So the first week, I remember what I did was just around six o'clock, I would go and take a walk around the block. And it, to me, it was like, walking around some sort of paradise because it was just so pretty. Um, Arlington was just su such a nice place to look at. Well, I was definitely scared to go outside and I just stayed home all day. And well, since the time's like different and well, th here's night and day over there. So we kind of just slept all day because we weren't used to the timing. And well, the whole week I was just inside the house. There wasn't much activities going on. I was excited, but then I was scared too because I was like, oh my God, I have to learn the new language all over again. I have to go to school with people I don't know and make new friends and everything is gonna be different. And in a way, it scared me. I want to become a scientist or an astronaut. So I'm gonna join physics in college and I want to study hard and want and I want like to uh, I want my f future bright well, I felt sad because I was going to leave my grandparents my friends my country it was really sad the last day I came here um, because there was a war in my country so I saw a lot of horrible things. I saw my friend got her hand cut off and I was supposed to be next, but I was um, lucky because I got my dad to take me out of there. And I lived in a refugee, ca refugee camp for about um, a year and then my mother was taken away. So she, f she found her way to come to this country. So she called like all the refugee camps in Sierra Leone and finally got me a hold of me and told my dad that how my little sister and I would come to this country, but we had to go to Guinea before we could come to America in order to get our papers. Yeah, I miss everything, every single thing that I, that I have there. My, grand, my family, first of all, my friends, my pets, even my soccer ball, because it was signature by my favorite soccer player, so. It's like, God, so yeah. Um, I guess what I miss the most about Ethiopia would be the, a lot of the things are down there. It's, it's a cultural aspect of it. It's um, here, it's, I guess it's, it's more individualistic, meaning, you know, it's you, you, you're doing your own thing, and then there's family. There, it's, it's a lot more communal. It's a lot more um, interaction with different family members, friends, and just the whole, I guess, I see it more as organic living, and it's it's really, it's really more about bonding and uh, getting to know other people, personal levels, as opposed to here where uh, you don't even know the name the name of your neighbor, um, and things like that. Having friends was really hard for me because I didn't know anyone. I thought they wouldn't like me, or I don't know. It was really scary because I thought I was like the only one who had this problem that came here and didn't know any English. Mm -hmm. But then I realized there were many people. Yeah. I miss my friends and I miss fa my other family members and definitely miss like celebrating like all the festivals and just being together with them and it's just, I just miss all that. I have my little sister back in Sierra Leone on my dad's side there and she's counting on me. Like my whole family on my dad's side is counting on me because my dad used to be the one taking care of the, my family on his side. So they count on me for me to be successful and help them out in the best way I could. So I really, I stress myself, stress myself so I, could, I have to finish school, I have to go to college and I have to have a career in order for me to help them. In Pakistan, 
they're like religion is the big thing that people used to see but here is like if you are any any if you're muslim sikh or uh, hindu they're not gonna say that why you're this or why you're that so they don't uh, see like religion here much they just judge people by their uh, by their mind and how they are Ooh, the first day of school I didn't even remember it was a long time ago but it was kind of really I was really afraid I was like oh my god they're all, they're all white and brown I don't know how they're gonna treat me they're gonna make fun of me Um, definitely, there were a lot of adults that, that were there for me. Um, one particular I really remember was, um, I guess, he, uh, a guy named John at the, um, at the library right across Kenmore Middle School. And um, I remember once uh, I went with friends to go get some uh, uh, DVDs, I think. And um, we went down there. And uh, that day I met him and he said, hi, uh, my name is John. And um, he, uh, he talked to me, who I, uh, he asked me who I was. And um, we talked a little bit. And, he he introduced me to uh, just really you know amazing amazing books I guess amazing things that I, I never thought I'd be interested in at that time and um, he really I guess understood my sense of, uh, of urgency to want to wanna understand things and he really really fostered that side of me and um, I, I really think uh, he was a really big influential part of my family, my life and the librarians were very nice they would always be like, are you interested in any particular subject? And I was like, well, I have a project to do about animals. And they're like, what animal? And I was like, oh, eagles. And they, they went and brought me a pile of books that were just about eagles. Um, but they weren't like, you know, the f like fat Oxford-like books. They were like, you know, books. So they were manageable. I could read them and I could understand them. So from one book, I went to the other and Although I, w I, I, was, I still struggle speaking, I still do today. Um, my reading and my writing improved because I just spent all of my afternoons in the library and so did my sisters. So whenever I go to the library, which is gonna get destroyed, Westover Library, it's, um, it's like I'm going, I'm going home. I'm like, I, I know the people there. Um, I got my first job there actually and I don't know, like, I feel a very special bond with the library because it was a place of support, a place where I can go explore and be safe when I was exploring. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, Mr. Sample, he's, um, I think, a counselor in our school. He helped me a lot, actually. He's like my dad in our school. He's always checking my grades, taking me to field trips, and other people, of course. And he's just there for me, and it, it makes me feel good, you know? Like, to have someone there who cares for me, beside at home. And, um, and there's another person, Miss um, Joy. She is awesome, oh my God. She's like our mom. She cares about her, like me and my friends. She's always checking our grace, also taking us to field trips, and I don't know, giving us boys advice and stuff like that. And yeah, and I know someone else who is my eighth grade counselor, Miss White. Wow, Miss White. She was awesome because I remember in sixth grade, through my middle school years, I used to get in trouble, and she was there for me, and you know, she calmed me down. And I learned a lot of things from them. They're awesome. <laughs> I love them all. If someone was coming and they were new here, I'd definitely tell them to like um, learn the language better because it makes it really easy to communicate with them and makes you understand the life. Mm -hmm. Everything is just easier once you know that. Well, my advice for them would be to don't be afraid because the, part, the hardest part of learning English is that you don't want to say what you want to say because you might think that you're going to say it wrong and people won't get you. Mm -hmm. But if, if you 
if you don't say it anyhow, you're not gonna learn. Because that's the hardest part for many of my classmates speaking English because they're afraid they will say it wrong. I would say accept change. Don't um, don't um, feel insecure about yourself. Make sure that what you do is what is best for you, and always make sure that you have your family close close in heart and speak to as many people as you have to for you to feel comfortable. Because if you're not comfortable, then you're not going to be successful in this country. Well, the only advice I would give them is like, be yourself. Never try to be someone that you're not. Don't be fake. Just be who you are. And you have to take into the account that you didn't come all the way from El Salvador to go to the United States and mess up. So. Were they filming?